Welcome to the podcast series where we're taking a look at hair restoration. In this episode, we're going to explore smaller hair transplant surgeries over a longer time period versus larger sessions. There are many advantages to doing smaller hair transplants, as in multiple ones, versus one or two large sessions via the same graft count. The advantages of doing smaller hair transplants is number one, it preserves the donor area. Number two, if there are complications, you haven't used up all your grafts. And number three, it allows for a process of sculpting rather than a process of building. We'll take a look at each of these in more detail. What we find now is that the common approach to undertaking a hair transplant surgery is to throw as many grafts at the scalp as possible. And in the process, we utilize an awful lot of donor. So places overseas like Turkey have become very common and they're very cheap hair transplants and it can be very, it can be a temptation, but it is a temptation with, with great caution that more likely will have complications and be disheartening than what it is intended to achieve. By doing thousands upon thousands of extractions, we utilize up a finite resource, the donor area, especially with the FUE technique. It introduces an awful lot of scarring. The donor area, the supply of lifetime grafts is extremely case dependent. It can be anywhere in an individual from 6,000 up to potentially 9,000, maybe even 10. But that is so case dependent and it also changes with time. So one cannot predict with accuracy at all what the donor supply will be over a lifetime because the donor undergoes miniaturization. It's very different from the recipient, but it reduces in size with age. And as we reduce that donor area in size, subsequently we have more to graft in the recipient, it becomes larger. So it's a very difficult issue. There is not enough hair in the donor area to match all of the hair that is lost in someone who is high on the Norwood scale. So through clever angulation and directionality that is meticulous, we achieve the illusion of density, but it will be less and less the higher one is on the Norwood scale because then they're going to have a smaller donor area. The advantage of using the approach of smaller hair transplant surgeries is we can still, through clever angulation and directionality, achieve density. But then we can go back and we can do another smaller session. By smaller session, I really mean below about 1800 grafts. The less, the better. And go into the same hair transplant result but also go behind it and potentially to the sides of it, wherever there is still progressive native miniaturization. And we can make the previous result thicker. You can only achieve a certain density as per maximum when you do a hair transplant due to recipient site spacing. If the, if the sites are too close together in mega sessions, there is a risk of necrosis and there can be a compromisation Often as well, you, you just don't know what that outcome is going to be. So why would you risk so much of your donor area? The other disadvantage of doing too much grafts is because you're not sculpting and going bit by bit, you're undertaking a massive build, a transformation in one go. You may not like the outcome. And there is no going back. Once you undertake a hair restoration, it really is impossible to ever go back to baseline. Grafts can be removed, but what a waste that is. And there's still underlying scar tissue present from the um, recipient sites that were made. So it really has to be right the first time. The massive advantage of doing the smaller sessions, aside from the preservation of donor area and management of that scar tissue, is that sculpting process. It is an extremely rewarding long-term process of crafting your own identity, your own physical aesthetic. And by doing it bit by bit, you can create the most customized plan to your frame. 
that is your hair. It also, you know, to be very honest, there's nothing as rewarding as long term over the years constantly improving. I cannot imagine what it would be like to do a complete hair transplant in just two sittings. It would be for the sake of high time preference, shall I say. And you would essentially have that feeling of transformation twice. But because hair loss is progressive and aging, it will only be downhill from there. Whereas the process of gradually sculpting is constantly evolving your own aesthetic over time. The end point of one's hair transplant endeavours, be it donor capacity or recipient, is case dependent. But one can easily take a break and stop potentially after, hypothetically, let's say 5,000 grafts. And they still may have three or 4,000 grafts in their donor if their donor is excellent. And they can wait for the future to transplant more using them grafts. So the process of the strategy of taking an approach with smaller hair transplant surgeries is absolutely invaluable. It is not a good idea and I would give caution to anybody who is planning to have a hair transplant surgery overseas because it is very likely that you're going to go to Turkey. I, I can see by the analytics in this channel that most guys are in their 20s and most guys want a quick fix. Most guys want to resolve this problem and I, I totally understand it and it's very, very tempting. But if guys are young, they're very likely lower on the Norwood scale as an average, which means they're going to advance on the Norwood scale with aging. It is a, a bad idea to utilize thousands and thousands of grafts by in likely, all likelihood the FUE technique to resolve this issue. Take it slow, take it easy, consider your technique and sculpt your own aesthetic slowly in the long term.